that increase in kind of uh, overall volume in terms of financing will have a lot to do with loan maturities. It will also have to do with the transaction environment. There's certainly a lot more dollars looking to invest in all asset classes. Multifamily in particular is a favorite asset class right now. So I would project volumes to be up unless we hit a little bit of a shock here or there, something that's out of everyone's control. But there's tons of capital on the lending side, tons of capital on the transaction side, which generally means, you know, there's going to be demand for product. Sellers will look to take advantage of that and sell into that market. Absolutely, life companies will do more this year at those lower leverage points. So 65% and under, high quality deals, they will stretch, they will do what they need to do to kind of win those deals. Again, they're going to be bumping up against Fannie and Freddie, but because of the life company's flexibility and structure in terms of prepay and term, they're going to win those higher quality, lower leverage deals. I definitely think you'll see more CMBS uh, transaction volume. I mean, if you if you ask around the CMBS shops and what their projections are, they vary anywhere from 60 to 90 in terms. And again, last year was roughly around 50. So all of that points to just kind of groups, the investors that are buying the CMBS pieces, kind of searching for yield above corporate bonds. And that's what's driving a lot of that demand. Um, again, a lot of that will depend on um, how that market sort of folds out this year. If we see interest rate increases this year, which uh, people are pretty secure that rates aren't going to go up a lot, but if we start to see those rates kind of move, that will cause kind of spreads to, you know, to come in or spread out. That may attract demand in that secondary market or may you know, contract demand. So I definitely think we'll see more CMBS done. Uh, we still see underwriting standards pretty tight from the CMBS. We see little, little nibbling around the edges for underwriting standards, and that would be more I.O. Uh, than they traditionally have done. May or maybe uh, some uh, flexibility in kind of this prepayment, which again has been the hard thing about uh, CMBS in terms of them building up real volume. Banks have also been a big source for uh, loans, particularly in this interim loan space. So where groups are buying a property and doing a value add, those banks have been a great lender for that in terms of where they keep that loan on their balance sheet. So for groups that are looking for a three year plus a one year and another year option, floating rate debt over kind of LIBOR, banks have been the predominant source winning that business. Uh, so anything that's a transitional asset or a bridge um, where it's a, a fairly stabilized asset but some value might be added, banks have absolutely been the best lender in that space for groups that don't want a prepayment, have to deal with a prepayment penalty, want to do their value add, and then exit the asset in terms of selling it into the market or putting a permanent loan on it. Banks have also been a great source for construction loans for new multifamily development. Again, that's been limited for the most part to a dozen or so around the country of the bigger banks, but we're seeing more and more of these regional sized banks come into that space. Uh, so I would expect to see banks be very aggressive for high quality sponsors, great projects on the new development side, and I think they'll continue that interim kind of loan lending program where they keep a stabilized asset that's going through a value add on their balance sheet.